Newsmaker Sunday with Fox 10's John Hook. Thanks for joining us on Newsmaker Sunday. As you've been reading, as you've been hearing uh, the news that President Obama is gearing to announce, gearing up to announce a 10 point plan to overhaul U.S. immigration policy via executive action, according to a draft proposal obtained by Fox 10 or Fox News first, and uh, now it's been widely reported. We're going to talk to two guys who can talk about what this means on the ground. On the left of your screen, Jose uh, Penalosa, an attorney, immigration attorney, well noted. Antonio Bustamante on the right of your screen. He's a criminal defense attorney and an immigration activist as well. And uh, he's been very involved in this issue. Thanks to both of you for being with Great us. You. Thank you for having me. What do you make of what the president, I'll start with you, Jose. What do you make of what the president is planning here? Do you, and, and why do you think he's doing it now? Well, the work that he is planning right now has been in the works, I believe, the whole year, starting from January to the present time, and specifically from June to the present time when he came out and made his announcement. So the reason behind that is because the Congress took the affirmative step of not acting. The bill, the Senate bill in 2013 did not reach the House floor. It did not have a chance to be vetted, and there was no vote. So that was, I believe, Speaker Boehner's decision to, that's his action, to not take action. Mm -hmm. So now the president's in a quandary. What do you do at this particular point? And the quandary is this, is that our immigration court system is filled. Here in Phoenix, we have over 10,000 cases and only three immigration judges. We have other detention centers in this place that are full. And so therefore, in terms of Arizona on the ground here, it's time the president act because all these agencies and the people on the ground here are waiting for some type of action to proceed forth with their life. Antonio, what's your take? My take is that uh, many folks in our country do not understand that of the approximately 11, 11 and a half million folks estimated to be here, uh, there's great suffering going on. Uh, the, the president and his party understand that something's got to be done. The Congress had a chance to act, the Senate did act, the House of Representatives had the votes, had the votes, repeatedly understood it had the votes. Speaker Boehner would not bring it up for a mm -hmm. vote. We've got a broken down Congress. They will not act. Now it's time for somebody to act like the adult and stop the suffering of separation of families and, you know, dealing with the, the issue. Do you think, you know, Jeff Flake uh, issued a statement today, um, and I'll pull it out here. He said uh, this, well, let me read it. Uh, this is Senator Jeff Flake. As someone who supports broad reform to our immigration system, I'm very disappointed with the action I'm hearing the president will take. It certainly doesn't seem like the right way to work with a new Congress. Do you think there is a risk that on an issue this large, you want to build consensus? You don't want to divide people off? That maybe this actually poisons a well a little bit? Do you buy that, Jose? Well, I believe the president and the Congress in the last six years have tried to establish that. And obviously, it didn't occur. And that's why we're here today. Now, if the president would sit down with the Congress right now in the leadership and develop a timeline to get to where we need to go, then perhaps that would be the appropriate consensus in order to get the bill done, get it vetted, and pass both houses mm -hmm. and get to the president's table in time. And but that has not happened, and therefore the president's in this posture that he must act to jumpstart this. Antonio, were you disappointed that in his first two years, when he had a Democratic Congress and a Democratic Senate, that he did not take up this issue? He said it was a priority, but he didn't do it, and he could have done it then because he would have easily had the votes. Well, of course I was disappointed, so were, all, so were all folks who wanted to see reform, but he had his hands full in the first two years. Just getting Obamacare passed right. was monumental and draining, and there was no time left, it seemed, for anything else of substance. Other important legislation was passed, Unfortunately, this was not. Uh, I can see exactly why it didn't come up or get introduced back then when he had a Congress with both with a majority in both houses. I want to take uh, Jessica Flores, talk to a family that's caught up in the middle of this. This will look very familiar to both of you, I'm sure. And I wanted to roll it here. Um, this is a story, one of the stories of a family that is caught in the middle of this. So take a look. A family divided by the border. Mary Paz Zuniga still can't talk about it. Her eldest son was deported from Arizona in 2009 after driving without a license. The family fears every day they'll be next. Now President Obama is promising to issue an executive order on immigration, which could change things for the Zunigas, but it's a promise they've heard before. The Democratic Party has been using the Latino vote as a tool and they didn't, you know, it, it wasn't effective, even though they, they're playing with our lives and 
but we didn't get that executive order. In 2012, Obama's executive order for undocumented students like Julio Zuniga allowed students brought to the country as children to stay. Julio went on to graduate from Grand Canyon State University. He's now getting his MBA there. He's hoping whatever action the president would take gives his parents and other siblings the same relief. I pay taxes with deferred action. I paid over six thousand dollars in taxes. Um, I, you know, I've been working hard to just be a model citizen. Arizona Senator John McCain speaking out today, saying the president should leave immigration reform to Congress. President Obama must know that if he it does an executive order that has to do with the legalization of millions of people in this country, it will be very damaging to our efforts to try to enact comprehensive immigration reform. After 18 years in the United States, the Zunigas still have the unsettling feeling, waiting to be reunited again. If we're able to live here without the fear of being separated, without the fear of, you know, being put in jail just for driving, you know, and, and splitting up the families, then, you know, we can, we can work with that. Jose Peñalosa and Antonio Bustamante are guests on Newsmaker Sunday. That looks very familiar to you, right? You're, you're dealing with this all the time. Yes, every day in my, my practice. As a matter of fact, in this particular case, I do know Julio Suniga, an outstanding young man. He is deferred action. He's concerned about his parents, like all the dreamers are, because apparently, according to this 10-point plan, the folks that are undocumented parents, like his parents, will be ineligible for this particular form of relief because they do not have U.S. citizen children or legal permanent resident children. Does, it change, that's why. does it change a lot, actually, though, because... President Obama has made it a, a clear priority to deport criminals who are Correct. here illegally. So is it likely that, that the parents would have been deported anyway, uh, given that? If they're, if they're not involved in any criminal activity, it's very unlikely they would be deported, correct? Well, under the current standard, that is correct, because there's something called the administrative closure prosecutorial discretion. Right. That is absolutely correct. However, the parents are still here in a limbo status. They have no employment authorization card, no social security card, and no way to really come out of the shadows and be productive like Julio and his brother have been since they received DACA. Okay. So that's their concern. The parents are in Never Never Land. And this is what I'm getting at, Antonio. How much actually changes with what the president's proposing? Does it change things a lot? I don't think it changes things a great deal in that people will not be deported. They're not being deported now. Uh, but it brings some kind of, of finality, at least uh, f under this administration, uh, to what the status is. And people will be allowed to work. They will have work authorization. E-Verify can be given its due respect. And we're not playing with the uh, situation of, let's pretend they're not here. Uh, we have to admit the folks are here, and they need to be accorded the human dignity of being told it's okay that you're here now. And you believe, Jose, that this has an economic effect. And, and people may not think about this, but I, I want you to talk about that a bit. We talked about it before we started taping. Sure, absolutely. Um, I've been practicing immigration law for 24 years, and I remember during the Clinton administration here in Arizona, specifically, our economy took off. And that was because I believe that a lot of folks at that time had already immigrated, their spouses immigrated, and their children. So what is the first thing they do? They want to be a part of the American dream. They buy a house, they buy a car, they ensure that, they go on vacation, they travel internationally. And these types of uh, financial transactions will spark and lift the economy. So instead of sending the money home, they're investing in themselves here, they're investing in our, in our state and in our country, and it's a valuable contribution. So that's why I believe this will jumpstart. But I believe the most important thing is I agree that we need to have a bill, and that's the only way to have final resolution to this, John. And I wish the president would sit down with the leadership, establish a timeline, and perhaps we could have something better than what he proposes. But absent that, then I think the president has to act. President Reagan did it. Pre president Bush did it in the early 1990s when I started my career in a program called Family Fairness. And you and think these acted. are analogous to what those presidents did and what President Obama did? Absolutely. Because people are calling this a constitutional crisis. I disagree with that because in 1986, President uh, Reagan signed the amnesty law that was effective, but it left out spouses and children. And then the Republican Congress established a program and they passed a, a, a legislation, but the House did not act on it. So what did President Bush do? He came in and enacted the Family Fairness Program. And that program was effective for a couple years. It allowed spouses and children to stay here and to have employment authorization. And what did the Congress do? 
Within a year, they got together and they enacted that into statutory law and made it called the Family Unity Program. So, Antonio, you believe the president's doing this to push the ball down the field and force the hands of everyone in Congress to take up this issue once and for all? Probably, because something has to be done. The Republicans, unfortunately, if they decide to file lawsuits against the, the whatever executive orders are instituted by the president, instead of working on passing immigration reform, it tells us what they're really up to, that they have no interest in uh, immigration reform. They have the opportunity now, they have until December 12th of this year, to pass or consider the current bill. Why aren't they calling that up now? Why isn't it on their plate? Uh, um, once they pass their own bill, it will supersede executive orders by President Obama. I want to roll one more uh, package here, because this will give kind of the Republican a little glimpse. And uh, David Schweikert, for one, one of our congressmen here in Arizona, is in this story. This is Mike Emanuel, tape number two. This is Mike Emanuel from Fox, uh, kind of sizing up the political storm that's gathering. Take a look. Speaker John Boehner's message late today, President Obama taking executive action will jeopardize immigration reform and other issues as well. We're going to fight the president uh, tooth and nail if he continues down this path. The draft order obtained by Fox calls for allowing up to 4.5 million illegal immigrants with children who were born in this country to stay in the U.S. It would expand deferred action for children brought to this country illegally by their parents. I'm confident that what the president will do will be consistent with our laws. In the absence of uh, congressional action, as the president has indicated, uh, he is prepared to use in an appropriate way um, the executive power that he has. One border state Republican warned activists they should be careful what they wish for regarding executive action. Being from Arizona, border state, I will tell you, if this president goes unilaterally, I believe he will make the subject of immigration absolutely toxic for a decade. And Schweikert said the costs will be more than political. Our school districts, our health care systems, all the other things that come along with that. There is concern about the impact in other ways since the lame duck Congress must pass a government funding extension. The current measure runs out at midnight on December 11th. Arizona Republican Congressman Matt Salmon sent this letter with 63 signatures to the chairman and ranking member of House Appropriations. Quote, we write to encourage you to include language that would prohibit funding for the president's reported intentions to create work permits and green cards for undocumented immigrants currently in the United States. House Appropriations Chairman Republican Hal Rogers warned if the president acts before Congress passes a funding bill, there will be an explosion on Capitol Hill. But Rogers says a government shutdown is not an option. Well, there's no one more strong uh, than me against uh, uh, unilateral action by the president on this subject. However, like it's been said before, uh, don't take a hostage you can't shoot. In Burma, White House Press Secretary Josh Earnest didn't reveal when the president would act. In some ways, the timing of the president's decision uh, is not nearly as significant as, as uh, the decision that is facing House Republican leaders uh, about whether they want to continue to block bipartisan legislation uh, that has already passed the Senate uh, and that would do so much more even uh, to address the challenges of our broken immigration system. Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell said there will be no default, no government shutdown, but clearly there's a concern about the impact on this Congress and the next two years. On Capitol Hill, Mike Emanuel, Fox News. I don't want to get too in the weeds on the political, but I've got to ask you guys. You're both attorneys. You know how to read through this stuff. Antonio, what is going on here? Why, why now? Why is the president doing this now? Well, the president made a promise, and he's been holding back on complying with that promise. He made a promise that within his first year, in his first term, he would have an immigration bill. It didn't happen. He's been making promises since then to push it. A bill got through the Senate, hasn't gone anywhere thanks to the House of Representatives. He made a promise several months ago, early in the over a year ago that he was going to take executive action. He's getting pressure. He's getting pressure and he hasn't kept his word and now he's got to keep his word on this. Jose, I, I have to read you this. This was the president back in uh, 2011 and I want you to just listen to this. He said, sure. uh, reporters were pushing him on taking executive action on immigration. He said, quote, we live in a democracy. This notion that I can change the laws unilaterally is not true. The fact of the matter is there are laws on the books I have to enforce and there is a great disservice done to the cause of getting the DREAM Act passed and comprehensive immigration reform passed by perpetuating the notion that somehow, by myself, this is the president's words, I can just go and do these things. We live in a democracy. 
you have to pass bills through the legislature and then I can sign it. If all the attention is focused away from the legislative process, then that is going to lead to a constant dead end. That's the president three years ago. I remember those words. Right? What, what is going on here? Well, he I sounds think like happened. a different guy. Well, I don't believe, he's the same person, obviously, but I think he wised up. And he wised up because he had the appropriate people around him to tell him, look, previous presidents have done this. And President Reagan did it, President Bush did it. And now you can do it. And I remember when his legislative uh, community was here in Phoenix for a presentation in 2012. And they told us they couldn't do it, and we said they could. And three months later, we had uh, deferred action. So absolutely, I think what it is, he's wised up. He wanted to work with the Congress. It didn't work out. But going back to the first point is, President Obama and the Democrats failed in 2009 to deliver reform. This is a political football, and now the Republicans control the football. And this is the situation that we're at. We need an impasse. But we have to give credit also to Senator McCain and Senator Flake and our delegation for trying to do something in 2013 to pass that. They did. And they really do want to do that. I've met and I've discussed with the congressmen on the Republican side here, and they want reform too because the growers are after them, big business is after them. They want to do something. And I wish they would meet with the president, establish a leadership team, and go in there and set up a timetable. You'd rather them do that together than have it done by executive order? I'd rather have that because we're going to have a permanent bill, one that's going to pass the Congress and that's going to meet the needs of this particular nation. Absolutely. So would you tell the president not to do this? Would you say, hold off, give it a chance with the new Congress? Or is that I would unlikely? say the president, one, should have this in his back pocket. But number two is to step out and meet with the leadership team right now and establish a strategy and a plan to get this done. If nothing happens and comes from that, one last effort, and the 2013 bill expires, then I believe he has to take action, show leadership, and bring this to the table, and that's going to bring the GOP back to the table, and we're finally going to have a bill. Okay. And that's what President Bush did in 1990. So some consensus would be better than just going, going it alone. Back on Newsmaker Sunday in a minute as we talk about President Obama's plan to take executive action on immigration reform. Back in a minute. Back on Newsmaker Sunday with my guests, attorney Jose Peñalosa and Antonio Bustamante. Uh, they are both very active in the immigration issue, obviously both immigration attorneys uh, and Antonio also a criminal defense attorney. Let's go through a couple of these things that the president is talking about. He's talking about a raise for ICE agents. That's one of the ten points in the plan, right. raising the, uh, the wage for ICE agents. What's going on there? Is he trying to buy their silence so they don't oppose it? Or what's he doing here? What, well, what's the plan there? I understand that there's a, a lot of, uh, uh, there's, there's resentment among the ranks. There's low morale. I've and, heard this a lot. And yes. that this might uh, improve the situation given that the policies uh, that will ease the immigration dilemma uh, re call for holding back on the vigorous enforcement these people were trained to engage in. Right. So. Right. This is saying we're going to work with you and a little money sweetens the pot a little bit. Probably. <laughs> I don't know if the president would put it that way, but that's what it seems I, it like. Sounded to me, it sounded to me a little bit like that. Expanding high-tech visas. Now, this, this would call for working with the State Department to expand visas for foreign-born workers with high-tech skills. Are you dealing with these clients? I don't particularly deal with that in my particular practice. I deal with the bread and butter issue, the, actually the court defense work. But I do, do have fellow attorneys that are interested in that work. They do that type of work. And what we're doing is we're lacking those STEM type qualified candidates to stay here in this country. So we have folks that come from outside of the country, go to ASU, U of A, for example, graduate mechanical engineering, and, we lose and them. they're left out. We right. lose them. And so we need those folks here. If they establish a loyalty here, they know our language and they're willing to assimilate and they're willing to be productive members of our society. Strengthen border security. Antonio, this, this is the one that Republicans have got to have to feel good about all this. And one can throw more money at it and feel like you're doing something, but what folks don't understand and what rep many Republicans refuse to admit is the border is so shut down. Go down to the border in Nogales I have. or San Luis, or, and we will see across the, the 2,300 miles of that border. It's improved immensely. I mean, yes. no one can it's get in, not, no one can get out. It's not completely secure. I wouldn't say that by any stretch of the imagination because we keep having guys you know, our piles had a, a few who've been here five, six times. So they're getting in and out and in right. and out. If they pay astronomical amounts to coyotes, right. but try to get through by jumping that fence or getting through the, the, this 
this non-existent barbed right, wire. Right. It, it, the border is very secure. We can keep securing it and keep securing it. That's not the problem it's with the our economic, immigration policy. It's the economic draw that brings people here, right? That's absolutely correct, but the standard has to be we have different ports. In San Diego, they have 90% apprehension rate. Right. In Yuma, 90% right. apprehension rate. And that's the standard that we need to work. And if both parties are fine with that standard, we need to establish that apprehension rate here in Arizona and down through Texas. And that is real border security when you have that 90% apprehension rate. And whatever it takes to get there is what's best interest of this country because we're also talking about stopping drugs to come into this country. It's just not undocumented people right. coming here. It's drugs. The president also in this 10 points prioritized deportations for serious criminals. Isn't that kind of already going on? Yes. That's really where the administration's put its focus. We're going to deport criminals. That's what they've said. For people who are working here and basically doing the right thing, we're not going to get exercised about that. We're not going to spend a lot of time and resources on it. You think that's been the right approach? Absolutely. Uh, when you talk to citizens here in this country who know undocumented folks, uh, they, they, they understand that there, there are laws that, that need to be enforced, but not my friend who I know, or not my right. gardener, not my nanny. They're wonderful, hardworking, industrious, beautiful people. Well, guess what? <laughs> That's what the vast majority right, of the 11 Jose, and a half million are. Jose, yes. how, how would you, if we go down this road, let's say the president does this, which we believe he will do. Let's say Congress then maybe takes it up at some point. How do we know we're not going to be right back here in 20 years with the same issues? that it will finally once and for all be over with this discussion. Well, I believe number one is going to start with the 90 percent apprehension rate across the ports. Number two, we need to have practical amendments here. For example, we need to be able to bring in farm workers here, seasonal workers. We need to do number Expanded three. Expand green cards. Expand green cards for high tech people. And number four, perhaps limit the amount of visas that you're able to use to bring in. For example, if I wanted to immigrate my brother, limit that to just my parents and my spouse and children. So those are practical ways to solve this problem. And of course, a lot of people advocate E-Verify. But there's a lot of uh, multiples in there, a lot of factors in there, and I believe this is an issue that we're always going to address because we're one of the best countries in the world. We have to recognize that. People yearn to come here, and we have to have a, an efficient system that needs to be managed over time to adjust that fluctuation to meet our national interests. Take a break here on Newsmaker Sunday. Some final thoughts here in a moment with our two guests talking about immigration reform uh, via executive order that the president is apparently going to roll out here shortly. Back in a minute on Newsmaker Sunday. Back on Newsmaker Sunday, talking immigration uh, and the president's uh, action on the left of your screen is Jose uh, Peñalosa and Antonio Bustamante on the right of your screen, both immigration attorneys. Final thoughts. If you were to speak to a Republican and say, I know you're freaking out about the president doing this on his own, how would you argue it that this is why it's a good idea? Sure, and I speak with Republicans and Democrats and all folks every day. And objectively, number one is that this is constitutional, this is lawful. Go back and look at case history. And go far as back as Mr. Reagan and, and President Bush that did this. Number two is that objectively, financially for our economy, this is something to bring security financially. Number three, we're going to document the people who are here. They're going to pass biometrics. We're going to know who's here and who is good and who is bad. Those are three great points to bring up to them to have an objective conversation and leave the emotion side out of this and do what's best for this situation. And, and maybe I misspoke there because that's the assumption that all Republicans don't like this. Republicans look through this and they say, these are good ideas, we just don't like the way the president's doing it. Well, uh, then they should encourage our members of Congress mm -hmm. to pass a law, for goodness sake. Let's get a law passed. We have an insane immigration system. Our system of our immigration policy is lawlessness. And everybody has left I'm it glad that to way. hear you say that. I, it's I, a lawless policy. That is exactly right. So let's make it <laughs> appropriate. Let's guarantee the labor force we need from abroad. Let, let's organize it and have okay. it uh, uh, something that is not so haphazard and lawless as we have it now. And These folks are needed. They're not going anywhere. So do things right. Let's talk about that because this only applies to five million. So we still have my math is right. I didn't go to Stanford. But we've got 7 million more who are still in the shadows. What do we do with those folks? This won't address that. It will not address that. And whatever program comes out, we're not going to be able to address the whole to 11 to 12 million. It's impossible. There's always going to be folks left out like there was in the amnesty law, practically speaking. In 86. So that's correct. 
So where do we go from here is that we're going to have to be able to address the needs of those particular people, like we saw in the video perhaps of the parents of dreamers. What happens with them? And we don't know. And that's why we're coming back full circle. We need legislation to cover all of this in an yeah. appropriate manner. And you would prefer then, I just want to make sure I get it right, Jose, you would prefer that the president actually try to get Congress on board with this and not just do this himself. Well, the Congress is not going to be on board with executive action. I'm talking about in the month that's left to meet with, with the leadership and the new leadership that's coming in and say, look, can we bring the 2013 bill that only has a month and a half of, of life left and can we vet it? Can we go through campaign? Can we go through committees and maybe get something done? If not, all right, what do we do in January? What's the timeline so I can tell the American public and my constituency what's going to happen here? And better if we do that... It, better to tackle it with this Congress or the next Congress? Well, I would try with both. I mean, right now, the current Congress, and then meet with the leadership of the incoming Congress to say, what can we do? What's the timeline? Yeah. And if the timeline works, I'd rather have legislation. If it doesn't, the president has to act. Quick final word here. I don't understand why this... Uh, it, anyone in the Republican Congress is, is not making it clear they intend to pass immigration reform and why they have not made it clear that there are certain issues they're willing to enact. By not doing that, they're leaving the president in the situation he's in. And he's running the agenda right now, and even once, though he just got walloped in the election. And once, it's interesting. And once he does what he does, then instead of, of arguing or, or bickering about it, pass mm -hmm. a bill. Okay. Jose Penalosa, yes. uh, Antonio Bustamante, great to see you both. Appreciate your time on Newsmaker Sunday, and we'll Thank see you, you again next week. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and get all the best videos from Fox 10.